This is still part of 100 Wonders, the October edition. North of Rome, in the woods of Italy, there are monsters lurking. We tend to think of urban exploration as a relatively modern affair, but it has parallels that go back much farther than that. Interested, curious writers and artists tend to seek out the odd and unusual. In the case of Salvador Dali, he found something truly spectacular. In 1938, he came across what the locals called the Parco de Monstri, or the Park of Monsters. The Garden of Monsters was commissioned in 1552 by Prince Pierre Francesco Orsini. And he didn't commission this to be beautiful or to impress you. He wanted it to shock you. The prince was returning from a brutal war. He had seen his best friend die, and then he'd been captured himself and held ransom for over three years. When he was finally released and got home to his beloved wife, she died shortly thereafter. One thought is that he commissioned the Park of Monsters as a way to deal with the immense grief that came along with all of this tragedy. An inscription at the entrance of the park says, those who do not visit this place with raised eyebrows and pursed lips will fail to admire the seven wonders of the world. He was like, this place is nuts, and if you're not into it, then nothing's gonna float your boat. In this park is a giant elephant lifting a Roman soldier. There is a house purposely made to slant in a strange and disorienting lean. Two giants ripping each other apart. A sculpture of a giant fish with a little world and a castle on top. And the idea is that the fish is time itself and it dwarfs everything else. These are creatures from beyond space and time long before Lovecraft. It's all ancient monsters. It's a bestiary. And of course, most captivating of all is the enormous head of Orcus, god of the underworld. His maw wide and gaping, begging for you to step inside. On Orcus's upper lip is the inscription, All Thoughts Fly, which is a theme throughout the gardens, this notion that basically you will be rendered senseless by the aesthetic experience. Also, as a kind of a trick, it's like a whispering gallery, so if you stand in a certain place, uh, people at the bottom of the steps can hear you speak. So you could go in there and be like, this is Orcus, go away. Once the prince died in the 1580s, no more work was done in the park, and by the 1800s and 1900s, it had fallen entirely into disrepair and become basically a spooky legend for the locals. So the entire park has this kind of incredible surrealist feel to it, which is why when Dali discovered it or rediscovered it, he was like, this is my jam. He made a short film about it. It inspired a painting of his. He sort of brought it back into public consciousness and it was finally uh, restored in the 1950s and has gone on to become a well-visited attraction. We don't have any records of what the prince's mind state was when he built the Park of Monsters and whether he was working through his grief or simply just wanted to do something that was different from the fancy schmancy sculptures going on around him. He really created a unique destination. And although it may be shrouded in mystery, Salvador Dali certainly knew it was special when he stumbled upon it. More videos here and subscribe here. I wanna thank YouTuber Eddie Gurge. Uh, thank you for watching the show. Thank you for guessing that is it was in fact a moose skeleton. We have an entire moose skeleton here in the office. One day we will construct it. And thank you for suggesting such a great 100 Wonder to do. I love this place. I was thrilled to put it into the 100 Wonders. It belongs there. So thank you again so much for that suggestion.